just one other thing. I got to get this off my chest. Donald Trump is a jerk. Thank you. <laughs> you can't. You can't. You can't. You cannot insult your way to the presidency. You can't disparage women, Hispanics, disabled people. Who is he kidding? That's Jeb Bush at a town hall in New Hampshire over the weekend. Bush's campaign has been stalled in low single digits in the polls. He's chosen to go after Donald Trump anytime he can, but will it help revive his numbers? For more, let's bring in our panel. First, we are pleased to be joined by pollster John Zogby of Zogby Analytics. John is also the author of the best-selling book, First Globals, Understanding, Managing, and Unleashing the Potential of Our Millennial Generation. Also joining us is presidential historian Craig Shirley. Craig is the president of Shirley and Bannister Public Affairs. He's also the author of Last Act, The Final Years and Emerging Legacy of Ronald Reagan. Gentlemen, thank you for for being here on Newsmax Prime. Craig, yeah, let's get to pleasure. Yeah, thanks so much guys for being here. And Craig, let's get to it. The other candidates, they don't seem like they want to take on Trump, fearing they would lose his followers. But at this point, don't you feel Jeb really has nothing to lose sitting at 3% in the polls? Well, he has nothing to lose, so and and that's often what compels candidates into saying uh, controversial or even uh, reckless things. It hasn't worked before. You know, Rick Perry tried it and other candidates tried it. Lindsey Graham tried it. And he's now out. Uh, but Jeb is at 3% uh, is that he'll probably be in negative territory, you know, next week. Uh, so <laughs> he's, it's a desperation thing. But I think it's interesting is, is that in the very same bite where he said, you can't insult your way to the presidency, he then insulted Donald Trump. So I guess Jeb is now trying to insult his way to the presidency. Well, I, I guess he saw it working for Trump. Hey, John, the latest poll has Trump at 39%, so that still leaves 61% in play. Why not go after the front runner? You've been following this a long time, politics and, and doing polling. Why has this field been so afraid to challenge him? Well, you know, as Craig pointed out, they're, they're afraid of, um, of turning off a lot of Trump supporters, some of whom, you know, are not regular voters or just very alienated uh, toward the Republican Party. I think Jeb's strategy is, is a good one, however, uh, not necessarily a successful one, but, but a good one in that there traditionally has been a place for an establishment candidate. And the establishment does, in fact, disdain Donald Trump. And so, his battle right now is with Chris Christie and John Kasich, to some degree, Marco Rubio, to position himself, not so much to knock Trump off as king of the mountain, but at least for now, to position himself better to be that establishment candidate who could perhaps win in New Hampshire. Craig, I thought this was fascinating. Forbes came out today and said Trump will, quote, spook the markets in 2016. Would you agree to that if he's the nominee? Well, if I had a crystal ball or if I had the newspapers for a year from now, I might agree with that. But, I mean, I don't know how, how Steve Forbes could make that uh, claim. Otherwise, is that, you know, he, he would have foresaw the uh, economic meltdown that happened in uh, George Bush's uh, second administration. Uh, I, I think it's just it's an interesting soundbite, but ultimately it's meaningless because nobody knows, you know. Things were forecast about when Reagan was going to be elected or when uh, John Kennedy was going to be elected. Is is that most of these things are just uh, just uh, you know smokescreen? John, one John. candidate who did challenge Trump. In fact, he had his cell phone number exposed because of it. Senator Lindsey Graham, who today dropped out of the race earlier, and wanted to ask you: Do you think this was more a reflection of Lindsey Graham, the candidate, or? Possibly his policy. He seemed to be more hawkish, talking about boots on the ground. What did you think of the Graham candidacy? A little bit of both. Uh, I think the Republican Party is worse for not having a Lindsey Graham in, in the race. And I wrote about that, actually, in, in Forbes a couple of hours ago. But first of all, I don't think he projected a compelling persona, a uh, compelling candidacy. He looked smaller than the job, to be very honest with you. Um, by the same token, he is more hawkish. And while you have a lot of candidates who are talking tough, uh, especially vis-a-vis -vis ISIL and, uh, and uh, American policy in the, uh, in, in, in the Middle East, 
Lindsay was probably the toughest of them all, and I don't think Republicans have a will to put boots on the ground. Uh, I agree. I, I mean, I think that there is simply a sense, not that we're afraid, but that that sort of policy just doesn't work for all us. All right, John, I want to jump in real quick because I want to get Craig's opinion about this new Hollywood movie titled Reagan. In fact, you were mentioning an article today, Craig. Your thoughts about this? It's enraging a lot of conservatives. We got about 20 seconds. Well, I, I, it's it's appalling based on the uh, script. Is is that you know Hollywood keeps trying to tear down Reagan. They keep making bad movies about Reagan. They keep portraying him as anything but what he was. And now this uh, this uh, script is uh, portraying him. Which, by the way, we can thank Bill O'Reilly because they said in the story that O'Reilly's book inspired them to write this uh, script about Reagan being addle-brained in the second term and being led around by an intern. So once again, uh, Hollywood and uh, the Hollywood left uh, aided and abetted by Bill. O'Reilly and his uh, All right. bad book. Uh, Craig, we got to leave it right there. I appreciate your comments about Bill O'Reilly and Ronald Reagan. We're coming right back right here on Newsmax Prime.